and the first will be last. The gospel according to Christ. In the name of one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of our lives, amen. Are you envious because I am generous? I mean, these workers in this parable, definitely. I mean, you got to feel for those, those laborers who've been laboring for 12 hours, receiving the same wage as the ones who labored for just one hour, or three hours, or six hours. And they don't. That the, 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 the landowner's generosity feels unfair. The problem with believing in a gracious God that is abounding and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love is that God often loves the people we don't want God to love. Or God is often generous towards the people we don't want God to be generous to. Um, and I think that the book of the, the story of Jonah is a great example of this. So I'm going to preach on the story of Jonah today. Um, in, uh, like, I think it was 722, the Assyrian army, of this is B.C., before Christ, uh, the, the Assyrian army and the capital was Nineveh, came in and they conquered the northern kingdom of Israel. And they took the people, in, I mean, they basically destroyed the northern kingdom, plundered it, killed off a lot of the inhabitants, and the ones who were left, they took away into slavery. And the northern kingdom, these were the, the tw part of the 12 tribes of Israel, these were the majority of the 12 tribes of Israel just disappeared. I mean, they disappeared into, into history, right? And the, the Assyrians, and, and especially the king in Nineveh, was, were known for being harsh and cruel. And so you can understand that the Israelites didn't like the Ninevites. In fact, they hated the Ninevites. The Ninevites had done them wrong. The Ninevites had, had, had destroyed their northern country. And so the prophet Nahum comes along, um, you know, uh, and, and uh, scholars feel that, you know, Nineveh fell later in 600, and the prophet Nahum comes along, and uh, he writes, A jealous and avenging God is the Lord. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and rages against his enemies, Right? This is everybody's worst nightmare of the Old Testament God, the angry, wrathful God. And yet, you can hear for the people who have suffered at the hands of the Ninevites, this is a, this is a prophecy about Nineveh, they want God to be vengeful. They want God to punish the Ninevites. The Lord is slow to anger, but great in power. The Lord will by no means clear the guilty. His way is in the whirlwind and storm. The clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry. He dries up all the rivers. Bashan and Carmel wither. The bloom of Lebanon fades. The mountains quake before him and the hills mount. This is an angry God who can destroy the earth. The earth heaves before him, the world and all who live in it. And for those Israelites, yeah, this God is on our side. And this God is about to destroy those people. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the heat of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and by him the rocks are broken into pieces. He will make full end of his adversaries and will pursue his enemies into darkness. Right? That's Nahum. <laughs> and then the best of the book of Nahum is how God will destroy the Ninevites and how he hates, how God hates the Ninevites. And for the Israelites who hated the Ninevites, this was very satisfying. It met their need for vengeance. It met their need for retribution. It met their need for a sense of justice. So then comes the story of Jonah, which is actually a satire. I mean, it's, it's, it, I mean uh, it's, it's not a historical story. It's, it's, it's meant to be a satire, and it's meant to challenge that notion about God. Is God really this vengeful, wrathful God? Or is God who we say God is? Um, and Jonah quotes it. It's a, it's a, it's a, is God really uh, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and ready to lent, relent from punishing? So what happens in the book of Jonah is God says to Jonah, get up and go prophesy to that great city of Nineveh, for, I have, for its wickedness has come before me. And Jonah doesn't say a word. Nineveh is to the east and towards where Iraq is. And what Jonah does is he heads towards the coast on the west and he gets on a ship and he goes as far as he can to Tarshish, which is on the, the Atlantic side of Spain. It is as far as you can get away in the Mediterranean from uh, Nineveh. And so Jonah gets on this boat, headed for the western coast of Spain. 
And, us, and God sends this huge storm, this huge tempest, right? And the, and the sailors of this, this, this ship um, believe in the gods of the sea. They believe in the gods of wind and the gods of the, the thunderstorms, right? And they can recognize that this is not a natural storm. The gods are angry for whatever reason. And so they, they pray to their gods and, and, and to, 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 to bring relief and nothing happens. And they realize they've got a passenger who's down sleeping in the hold. And so the captain goes down and Jonah is sleeping throughout all this, hidden from it all. And the captain wakes him up. And he's like, dude, what are you doing? Pray to your God. <laughs> We're about to die here. Pray to your God. And he goes back up and Jonah doesn't do anything. Jonah's mad at God. Jonah doesn't care what God does. Jonah is like, you know. So they finally, the soldiers cast lots to try to figure out who is it? Who are the gods angry at? And the lot falls towards Jonah. And so they ask Jonah, hey, dude, what are you, what, what's your deal? What's your story? What's going on here? Why are the gods angry at you? And God says, and Jonah says, well, I, I worship Yahweh. I worship the Lord God who created the heavens, who created the seas, who created the dry lands. And he told me to do the, he told me to go to Nineveh, and I don't want to go. And so I'm running in the opposite direction. And the, sa- the sailors are like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't make your God angry. You can't make the gods angry. And, and so they, well, what should we do? And Jonah's like, well, if you, if you want to appease God's anger, you should throw me overboard. And the sailors are like, well, we're pagans, but we're, we're ethical people. Like, we don't make human sacrifices. I mean, we believe in these other gods. We're not going to throw you overboard. So they, they row even stronger to try to avoid the, you know, to try to outrun this, this storm, and the, the storm doesn't relent. And so they finally decide, okay, we'll throw Jonah overboard. But before they throw Jonah overboard, they pray to Jonah's God, and they say, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't get mad at us for killing a, 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 an innocent man if, if, if he is innocent. This is your dude. Don't get mad at us for killing him, but it seems like this is what we've got to do. So they throw him overboard, and immediately the storm ceases. Jonah sinks into the water, and the, these, sold, uh, these mariners, these sailors on the ship, they make a sacrifice to Jonah's God, and they make vows to this God who created the wind and the waves and the sea. And meanwhile, God sends a fish to swallow Jonah up. Or it actually says a sea creature. There's a sea creature of some sort, a great fish, a whale, who knows. But there's a sea creature who swallows Jonah up. up, And Jonah is in the belly of this whale for three nights and three days. Because you you can't tell. When you're in the belly of the whale, you're not sure. The belly of the fish, you're not sure. Is it night or is it day? Anyway, he's there for three nights. And this gives Jonah a chance to kind of pause and reflect and think about his journey and think about what he's done and Think about why he's so angry at God and think about what God has done in his life. And Jonah has this turn and he starts praying this prayer of thanksgiving. He's like, yeah, I, I, was, I was being drawn towards the pit and the seaweed was wrapping it. it. You know, the seaweed was being wrapped around my head and the Lord came and rescued me. And I look forward to the day where I can go and make sacrifices in God's temple and, you know, thank you, God, for saving me. So Jonah has this change of heart, and so God causes the, 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 the sea creature to spit Jonah up onto the, the dry land, and Jonah, you know, climbs upon the sea. And then God says to Jonah what God said at the beginning of the book, go to Nineveh and prophesy against it, for its wickedness has come up to me. So Jonah makes the journey, and it's, you know, the, the text condenses it, but it, you know, it's going to take him a couple weeks to get to Nineveh. And when he finally gets to Nineveh, it's this huge city. It takes him three days to go around the streets of Nineveh. And, and, and what he says is, in 40 days, Nineveh will be no more. In 40 days, Nineveh will be no more. In 40 days, Nineveh will be no more. If you know anything about the prophets... This is the most uninspired prophecy ever. <laughs> I mean, this, this is like the worst sermon ever. I mean, the prophets are meant to inspire you. They're meant to like get, your, get you thinking and get your, 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 your blood going. And like, oh, God is angry. Maybe we should turn. Maybe we should repent because God is angry. And maybe God will relent and, and show us compassion after all. And Jonah doesn't give him any of it. Jonah doesn't give the Ninevites that. He's like, 40 days and Nineveh will be no more. 40 days and Nineveh will be no more. But the Ninevites hear it. And the Ninevites are like, really? God's mad at us? Seriously? 
And like, oh, well, we better turn. We better change our behavior. We better, we better do something different. And so they decide to start fasting, and, and they, they, they put on rags, basically, and, and cover their faces in ash, which is, you know, a sign in the ancient world of grief and mourning and repentance. It's like, you know, you make yourself look like trash, basically, to kind of express what's happening on, going on internally. You feel bad, and so you're like, you're showing it, right? And the news of this gets to the king of Nineveh, and then the king of Nineveh is like, really? God is angry at us? Oh, we better turn, we better repent. Some people think that the most unbelievable part of this story is the, st- the part about the, fi- the whale or the sea creature and Jonah being in the belly of a sea creature for three days. Actually, the most unbelievable part of the story is that the king of Nineveh repents. From a Jewish perspective, this is, uh, this is just outrageous. I mean, the, the, the sea creature, the three days in a sea creature is more believable than the fact that the Ninevites would repent and that the king of Nineveh repents. But that's what he does. He turns. He changes his direction. And he's, he makes this commandment that everybody, all the humans in the land and all the animals, all the cattle and the, the sheep and the goats should fast. And all, all the humans and the cattle and the sheep should put on sackcloth and put on these rags. And all the humans and the, the cattle and the sheep should, should smear ashes on their face. And so you see all of Nineveh and the cattle and the sheep and the goats just mourning and, and repenting and turning from their evil ways. And the text says, you know, this is where our reading today begins. God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways and God changed God's mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them. And God did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah. <laughs> and Jonah became a- angry. And in fact, the, the word in the Hebrew is that it, be, it seemed like evil to Jonah. This seemed evil in Jonah's sight. And he became angry. And he prayed and he says, Lord, God, isn't this what I knew? I knew this is what you were going to do. I knew you were going to forgive them. I knew that you were a gracious God, merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And I didn't want you to do that. I wanted you to punish those people. I wanted them dead. And then Jonah's like, oh, my God, take my life. It's better for me to die now than to keep on living. Jonah's being a little histrionic here. And the Lord says, is it right for you to be angry? Seriously? So Jonah leaves the city. He goes out and he sits on a hill overlooking the city. And he's watching and he's waiting and he's hoping for the apocalypse. I mean, he's hoping that God will change God's mind and destroy the city after all. Like he's he's waiting for the show to begin. And so God decides, okay. And he's sitting in the hot sun, you know, he's, he's sitting there sweating. I'll cause this plant to grow over him, right? This plant with big leaves, it gives him some shade. And, you know, this plant grows over Jonah. You know, apparently it's a very fast, speedy growing plant. And, you know, Jonah um, is very happy about the bush, very happy about the plant. Jonah stays there. He sleeps there. He sits there in the next day, and God sends a worm to destroy the plant. God's teasing with Jonah here. Um, Somebody said God's being kind of a trickster here. Um, The worm kills the plant, and then God sends a sultry wind to, to, to kind of wither it, and then Jonah's just hot again, and Jonah says, it is better for me to die than to live. And God says to him, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And Jonah's like, yes, angry enough to die. The Lord says, you're concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came to being in the night and perished in the night. Like things happen, Jonah, and you don't get to control the things that happen. I'm the one that controls the things that happen. And you may not always like it, but you've got to trust that I know what I'm doing. And God's like, shouldn't I know, shouldn't I, I mean, you're concerned about this bush, and shouldn't I be concerned about a city of 120,000 people? Plus, I mean, and these people aren't so smart. They don't know their right from their left. Like, I, shouldn't I care for them? And, and what about all those animals who are also repenting and, and, you know, wearing sackcloth and ashes in the process? Are you envious because I'm generous? We're not told what happens with Jonah. We're not told how he changes his mind, whether he he switches from wanting God's wrath to understanding that God is gracious 
and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. But we'll have to discern, okay, where are we at in this story? How do we feel about a God who's so generous? How do we feel about a God who is that loving? Let everyone who has ears hear. Amen.